clinching just their second playoff appearance in the last 18 years. Ant, Anthony Edwards, deloading D'Angelo Russell combined for an efficient 59 points. While they were made fun of for over-celebrating, it was cool to see Patrick Beverly prove his former team wrong, and it was even better to see this young squad embrace their home crowd after the city's gone through some hardships over the last few years. The Minnesota Timberwolves may have got hyped like they won the 2022 NBA championship, but that doesn't mean they're complacent. This video breaks down the T-Wolves' emotional play-in tournament W and predicts their seven-game series against John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. Right before that, 90.3% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Even with Carl Anthony Towns shooting 3 for 11 from the field and nearly fouling out, a packed house in the Twin Cities saw their Wolves take care of business. We'll get to how Russell and Edwards carried a big chunk of the scoring load, but undoubtedly Minnesota's most underrated player on both ends of the floor is Jaden McDaniels, and Jaden's first quarter three-point buzzer beater was massive to keep the Wolves around entering the second frame. The 28th overall pick from 2020's NBA draft out of the University of Washington in McDaniels has been a massive two-way player for coach Chris Finch all season long. According to NBA.com, Jaden's number three in the league in defending two-point shots this season, only behind three-time DPOY Rudy Gobert and oddly Chicago's third-string center in Tony Bradley. Opponents were shooting two-point shots 9.9% below season average when guarded by Jaden McDaniels in 2021-22. Jaden made steady progression in his sophomore year, posting career highs in points, field goal percentage, and rebounds, while getting the same amount of minutes he received during his rookie campaign. Taking into account that improvement, as well as Jaden's lanky 6'10 frame plus 7'0 reach, and Minnesota's top prospect on the wing is rounding into a draft steal, given he was passed on by 27 general managers a couple years ago. McDaniels has fit in perfectly with the Wolves' personnel, as he doesn't need the ball in his hands to succeed, and thrives off catch and shoots, back cuts, and thunderous attacks in transition with his long strides and beastly athleticism. On the other end, in addition to the stat I mentioned earlier, Jalen's defensive rating is tied for 7th best at his position. He's shown future DPOY upside in just his second year as a pro, but still doesn't get nearly enough credit for Minnesota's success. In Tuesday night's play-in game, McDaniels was a plus 9, helping hold Paul George to 10 of 24 shooting, give credit to bench guards Malik Beasley and Jalen Noel for combining to be a plus 8, but the leader by a mile in that crucial stat was Nas Reed. Reed's screen setting, rebounding, and defensive rotations led the 22-year-old center out of LSU to be a game-best plus 17. Also give massive credit for the victory to Jared Vanderbilt, who did a great job guarding the perimeter, and his rebounding was huge as well. Now that we've given the long overdue love to the players who never receive any attention, the nothing less than damn intimidating one-two punch on the perimeter of D-loading and Ant is who will break down next. When the Wolves got down by as many as 9 points in the second quarter, responding with not a single bit of fear in an extremely loud environment on their home floor, Russell and Edwards created and nailed must-have jumpers as if they've both got several years of playoff experience under their belts. For how young they are, specifically the first overall pick from two years ago in Anthony Edwards, it was surprising how calm, cool, and collected Minnesota's duo looked when the pressure was at its absolute highest. D'Angelo had 29 points, but maybe even more crucial were his six assists, as the former LA Lakers decision-making has come such a long way since his rookie year playing next to the Black Mamba. And whether it's Russell's leadership, his balance shooting off the dribble, or just his overall comfortability in an NBA environment, all the spotlight on him for the play-in game allowed the man to show off the entirely improved repertoire to the entire world. D-Loading's playmaking and consistent shooting stroke is going to be the key for Minnesota having a chance against the Grizzlies, more on that coming up, but maybe just as important as Russell is the up-and-coming phenom Anthony Edwards. Ants made five threes in the play-in game, signifying that when he's looking that poised and finds his rhythm on that sweet shooting stroke, he's essentially unguardable. Anthony's mix of blistering athleticism and a quick first step make him tough to hold down in the first place, so on nights where he's lighting it up from distance, opposing defenses have serious issues. 
Then there's the former LA Clipper, a grizzled, rage-inducing point guard who you either love or hate in Patrick Beverly. Personally, while being a Raptors fan, I admire Pat Bev's old school aggressiveness and intensity from afar. While people were laughing at him for jumping on the scores table like he's D-Wade or Kobe, this meant everything to Beverly against the team that gave up on him. Plus, Pat knew how much this meant to the city of Minneapolis. The Wolves' 2021 trade acquisition, who posted a 7-point, 11-rebound, 3-assist performance, came up with the signature play of the game when he ripped Clippers point guard Reggie Jackson, creating a steal for his teammate Anthony Edwards in the final seconds of the game. That play against his former team initiated a series of massive Twitter reactions that came from Beverly's post-game annex, which included having a drink in the new celebration and NBA Finals-worthy celebration. Pat received a $25,000 fine, probably for the Bud Light break he took in his press conference. Speaking on the emotional W after hugging his mom on the court, Beverly said, Man, I wanted this one so bad. This is just the icing on the cake, the cherry on top, play in to be able to beat them. Another goal scratched off. I told you we were going to make the playoffs. Most of you all, y'all looked at me like I was crazy when I first said that. I effing told y'all, end quote. While he's thought of as a player who can be replaced, it's no coincidence that the teams Patrick Beverly's been on in every season of his 10-year career have made the playoffs. He's a hard-nosed, gritty defensive talent who's got the unrelenting desire to get under his opponent's skin, whether with physicality, flopping, trash talk, or just pure incredible one-on-one -on -one defense. The man could care less about his reputation, he's trying to win. The intensity and timely plays on both ends of the floor from Beverly make up a solid chunk of the reason for why the Timberwolves could take the second-seeded Grizzlies to six or seven games and potentially come out on top. Easier said than done against a well-coached, stacked Memphis team. However, the Grizzlies are essentially just as experienced in the playoffs as the Timberwolves, just like John Morant, Carl Anthony Towns, and D'Angelo Russell each have one season of playoff experience under their belt, and as Anthony Edwards displayed in the play-in, He's not afraid of the moment, despite it being his first postseason experience. But what are your predictions for Minnesota versus Memphis? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says, My prediction for the series of Denver versus Golden State is a 4-1 to win for the Warriors. They just have too good of a team with shot creators in Curry, Thompson, and Poole explosive two-way forwards in Kaminga, Wiggins and OPJ and Moody, and tough fan favorite big men like Kevon Looney, the Warriors' Iron Man playing all 82 this season, as well as Nemanja Bialica. That's not including underrated guys like Juan Toscano Anderson and Chris Chioza, among others. The Nuggets do have an MVP candidate on their team, but the rest of Denver's players just can't match the Warriors' depth. Jokic is definitely going to have a great series, but I feel that the Nuggets only win one game and the Warriors will move on to the second round. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.